Hello, Dr. Dumontel. How are you doing today? I am doing great. Happy Perfect. to be here. I'm doing well. Yeah, of Good. course. Um, first, I would like to say, you know, we are socially distanced, so is it okay if we remove our masks for this interview? Yes, definitely. Perfect. Sounds good. All right. So my name is Nahum Samir. I am a third year student here at Sac State. I'm a business marketing major, and uh, I work within the Division of Student Affairs. Mm -hmm. And today we're just going to have a conversation about the vaccine, you know, get students knowledgeable on things that they may not be knowledgeable, not knowledgeable on, mm -hmm. you know, erase any fallacies or rumors there are regarding side effects and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question I have for you is, uh, which vaccine is Sac State administering to the students? Okay, so uh, because we have ultra cold freezers, we have the Pfizer vaccine. Okay. Cool. Yes. Pfizer vaccine. Is that one safe? Would you say that it's safe? I mean, all the vaccines are safe. You know, they, they work a little differently, but they are safe. Otherwise, you know, the FDA wouldn't have granted the emergency use authorization for them to be administered during this pandemic. So I would say they all are safe. Are safe. Yes. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. And I know there's three. There's Moderna, there's Pfizer, and there's the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Yes. Which one would you say is the best option? Because I'm, I'm sure everyone is not, you know, able to get, like, take their pick of which of the three they mm -hmm. have based on their location or, you know, things that they need mm -hmm. to, to be able to be approved for it. So which one would you say is the best vaccine? So that is a, a, a really, really tricky question because, mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, they all work differently. Mm -hmm. So you really can't say one is better than the other. Okay. Uh, they all give uh, really good efficacy. After the first dose, they're somewhere up in the 85% uh, range of you know, uh, giving protection against uh, the COVID virus. Uh, but they're, they're, they're all equally effective. Okay. They just work differently. Makes sense. And, and you said after the first dose. I know that the Johnson & Johnson one is only one dose, right? Correct. So for that one, why is that one one dose and the other two have two doses that are like at least two weeks apart? Like what's oh. the two-week period for? Oh, okay. So with the Pfizer and the Moderna, those are uh, three weeks apart. Okay. So 21 days uh, mm -hmm. in between from the first dose to the second dose. The Pfizer vaccine is just one dose. Mm -hmm. The Pfizer and Moderna are both what they call uh, mRNA or messenger RNA vaccines. And the uh, Johnson & Johnson is, it's called an adenovirus or mm -hmm. a viral vector vaccine. So just with the names alone, you could hear that, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, apples and oranges in, yeah. in terms of comparing them. And so in the trials, the, you know, the trials that they put together with the uh, Moderna and Pfizer, um, they found that a, a booster was needed. Mm -hmm. And with that booster, it could bring the effectiveness up to about 95 percent. Oh, okay. Okay. So... Again, which one's better? It's it's just you know whichever one you can get. Yeah, that's the better one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you said mRNA, the messenger RNA. I remember from that like ninth grade biology class, but mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how that works in terms of like a vaccine goes. Okay, you know I heard that uh, all of this is just from what I've heard, obviously. So we're here to you know clear the air on certain things okay. but i heard that it is different from most vaccines that people have gotten throughout their lives correct and how would you say it's different how does it work okay so full disclosure i am not a microbiologist so <laughs> okay, yeah. so the way that you know my explanation you know it, it's probably going to cause microbiologists to kind of cringe you know <laughs> because i'm going to oversimplify it it's okay so let's say with the flu vaccine so with the flu vaccine it takes um, the flu virus um, it takes out what causes the flu, it inactivates it. Okay. And so, uh, so when you're getting the flu vaccine, you're getting an inactivated virus that helps to activate your immune system, mm -hmm. you know, to create antibodies so that in the real world, if you're exposed to the flu, your body won't react as much hence, you know, get the flu or maybe get, you know, get it very, very mildly. Yeah. So with these messenger RNAs, how they work, uh, they, they don't work with a, the COVID virus, first of all. So you're not getting injected with 
a virus, mm. you know, even an activated, you know, virus. Yeah. So what it is, and this is where biologists, I'm sorry, microbiology is cringing. <laughs> it's um, okay. So the, it's uh, messenger RNA. And so what it does is the messenger RNA enters a cell, tells the cell how to make a harmless spike protein, which is um, a part of the COVID-19 um, virus. Mm -hmm. So it, it tells the cell, you know, gives them the recipe of how to make this, this spike protein. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and then after it delivers a package, the, the cell just says, okay, thank you, and, you know, destroys it. Okay. And then at that point, the, um, the cells can start creating an immune response mm. against this protein. So to build up, you know, antibodies to, to fight the, um, you know, the- The virus off. The virus off, yeah. That makes sense, okay, yeah. 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 That, that's, that's great, that gives me a better understanding, yeah. I'm sure. It gives everybody else a better understanding, mm -hmm. so thank you. Uh, in, ter in terms of side effects, right? So there's so many rumors, especially if you, like on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, you're gonna see like the most mm -hmm. you know, blasphemous rumors out there. Right. So in terms of side effects, what are actual side effects of the first dose, the second dose? Okay. And you know, w what's the percentages that people get that? Okay, so what I tell people, first of all, right off the bat, is with any vaccine, there are potential side effects. Mm. And the side effects with um, the COVID-19 vaccine are not, you know, aren't any worse than a flu vaccine or a tetanus vaccine, you know, hepatitis, you know, they're all, they're, they're similar. Uh, most common, the most common um, side effect is gonna be soreness on your arm, arm at the, at the injection, yeah. injection site. That's what you know, most of the people you know, complain about. Uh, other potential side effects, what is called potential? Mm -hmm. you, know, you might feel a little fatigue. Um, some you know, people get headaches, they, you know, they'll feel, you know, like I said, fatigue. Uh, they may feel a little achy, a little, you know, maybe a little feverish. But it's not that they have COVID, it's just that their immune system mm -hmm. is activating you know, to create these antibodies so that it could fight off the COVID uh, virus if you are exposed to it. Mm -hmm. And so what I just, I love to tell people when they ask me this question, like when am I, they'll ask me, when am I gonna start feeling yeah. this? And when am I gonna start feeling that? I said, don't worry about it. I said, you know, I just tell them, just, you know, deal with the side effects as they occur you know, potential, you know, side effects, you know, nausea, fatigue, a little headache, maybe a little achiness. So, you know, if you feel fatigue, go take a nap, go rest. You know, if you yeah. have a headache, take Tylenol, take ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. You know, you can manage them, you know, with, with those type of, you know, medications. But, you know, uh, what happens is we, we have a lot of, of uh, people coming in that are so worked up Mm -hmm. about what they're seeing on social media yeah. that you know, it's 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 you know the anxiety that they're 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 feeling about getting the they know they want the vaccine but they're just so worried about side effects yeah and and so you know i just try to to calm them and to say you know we don't know you know how you are going to react to the vaccine is going to be different than how i react to the vaccine yeah makes yeah. sense because everybody's body's different. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. So for someone who, you know, is listening to this or watching this and, mm -hmm. you know, is ready to get their vaccine, how would you suggest they prepare like the day before, an hour before, a couple days before to, mm -hmm. before they come in? Is there certain things that they shouldn't eat, should eat? Mm -hmm. Or is there, um, you know, yeah. things that they should drink, drink a lot of water, whatever mm -hmm. it is? Okay, that's a great question. Yeah. So, you know, first of all, I tell people, you know, to rest. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's as much as they can, you know, just, you know, to come in rested. Um, there's no direct specific preparation, you know, for the vaccine, you know, prior to getting the vaccine. But what tends to happen is people are so anxious about getting the vaccine that they don't eat, you know, they're not drinking, you know, they don't have a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. And so when they come in here, they're a little bit of a mess. 
tense. You know, to, yeah. to start off with, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, they were up all night or they're, you know, you know, um, on social media looking up, you know, this and that and all the, the bad things that they think, you know, can happen. And so we're seeing, uh, a, you know, um, I'm not, you know, a, a number of people coming in, you know, not eating and please, I tell them, please, please, please. Eat. Eat, right. and you know we, we generally have some snacks and some water on hand, but you know getting rest and just you know coming in, you know with you know uh, doesn't have to be a big giant breakfast yeah. or, or lunch or whatever, but just you know with with some nutrition on board, you know definitely <laughs> yeah. recommend that. So eat something, drink yes. some water, yeah. you know, and try to do the best that you can to relax. Right, exactly. Like it is hard. Even me coming in before I got mine, mm -hmm. I did the same thing. I was up on social media. Googling every single exactly. Stanford article exactly. I could find, trying right. to figure out, you know, what's going to happen to me, what's going to happen to my body. Um, but, you know, I ended up coming and, you know, the people here are so nice. And, you know, I, I did enough research to, to understand that, you know, it's okay. It's okay for me to get it. It's the best thing for me to get it uh, mm -hmm. at the moment as far as my health, my family's health, and just people around me's health. So uh, I went through it going forward and doing that. And, and, you know, I, I tell my, uh, you know, whoever, I tell my staff, you know, to spend however much time, you know, answering people's questions, mm -hmm. you know, before they get the vaccine. So we're not a mill that you come in here and it's like, you know, you come in, sit down, poof, get the shot <laughs> yeah. out the door, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you do, you know, have any questions, you know, I tell, you know, um, you know whatever students or, you know, other you know, community members that come in, you know, if you, if you have questions, you know, please, you know, ask us. And, you know, also, you can also ask your, you know, primary care physician or any other healthcare providers, you know, prior to coming in, you know, they're, you know, generally available to, you know, answer any questions. But, you know, we're happy to answer any questions and, and concerns prior to getting the vaccine. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, the next question I had was, you know, not only for myself, but for everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, will there will it be an every year shot like the flu shot? I mean the flu shot isn't obviously isn't mandatory you choose whether you want to take it or not Some people don't you know aren't harmed by flu season uh, Will the vaccine be a, a yearly shot like will you need a booster every year? Okay, so that is great. That is also a really good question <laughs> that yeah. it's it's the million-dollar question right mm. now We don't know so uh, you know, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and, you know, the, the Moderna, uh, they're, they're all doing uh, a lot of research right now to, to see whether it's going to be an annual, you know, vaccine, if it's going to be incorporated into uh, maybe a few years down the line, it, it might be incorporated into the regular, you know, flu vaccine. There are some amazing scientists that are you know looking at you know creating a a um, a vaccine that is universal, mm -hmm. so you know you don't have to worry about getting a flu shot and getting you know you know COVID you know shot or anything. Yeah. And so those are things that are coming down the line, like you know they're quite a few years off. But you know for the here and now, they're still determining whether it's going to be a booster shot or if it's going to be an annual, um, you know, vaccine. So it's still, as I, I tell people, it's TBD, you, <laughs> know, the, you know, to be yeah. determined, you know, whether um, it's going to, you know, be a, an annual, you know, vaccine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another question, I'm sure there, I mean, probably if, they, there's no, if there's no, you know, for sure answer on that one, there probably isn't going to be one for this one. Mm -hmm. But long-term effects, are there any, like, long-term effects? I'm talking, like, 20, 30 40, if, if whoever getting it is living that long, 40 years down the line, is there any effects from the vaccine? Because, I mean, it does seem like a, yeah. a sophisticated kind of thing that's yeah. going into your body. Well, I hope we're living that long. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Know, 30, At least, years. Yeah, for sure. So, um, first of all, uh, in terms of long-term effects, it's nothing out of the ordinary when you look at all the vaccines. Mm -hmm. So even with this, you know, short-term, you know, deployment, you know, they had an emergency use and having to get it out fat, you know, pretty quickly, they're not finding any, you know, great, you know, revelations or, you know, of, of issues that are, are going to affect, um, you know, people down the line, you know, mm -hmm. you know years to come. But again, it's, it's, still, it's still a work in progress. 
but they're, they're not seeing any worse outcomes, any different outcomes than your routine vaccines that you need to get. Cool. So it's yeah. not, nothing out of the ordinary. No. There's nothing that people should be fearful of in specific of this vaccine as far as long-term effects. Correct. It's just like any other one. Correct. Yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the next question I would have for you, and I think this is the, I mean, you said the other one was the million-dollar question, but this one might be the million-dollar question in, front of, in, in terms of people my age or, or anybody in general. Mm -hmm. You know, why do I need to wear a mask if I'm fully vaccinated? So, good question. Okay, so after you get your, you know, second dose of, you know, your, your vaccine, or if it's, you know, the Johnson & Johnson, you know, the one dose, mm -hmm. uh, you know, two weeks after you get the vaccine, um, you know, your immune system has, you know, pretty much, you know, done its job, you know, to, to create, you know, the antibodies to, you know, to protect. And it's, you know, because, you know, we're in a world where not everybody's going to be vaccinated, mm -hmm. you know, and um, the, the, vi the, the vaccine is not 100%, okay, but it, it gives you a strong fighting chance against getting COVID. You know, I'll just speak for myself, you know, I will continue, you know, to wear my mask in crowds, mm -hmm. you know, definitely in crowds because we don't know what everybody's vaccine status and it's more to protect myself you know just that little extra protection you know? so so the cdc is also coming out with you know mask mandates mm -hmm. uh that every day they're coming out with something different um, i think right now they said you can you know be in small gatherings if you know everybody's you know vaccinated yeah. you know outdoors you know if you're separated you still have your social distancing and if you don't know the vaccine status of, you know, some people. Mm -hmm. And and so I, I think we all have mask fatigue. Oh, you tell know. me about it. And, tell you know, it's, we all have mask fatigue. And, you know, I'm, I'm tired of not being able to, you know, see, you know, like today I'm like, wow, I get to see, you know, your face, you know, <laughs> yeah. who I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're all, you know, pretty tired of that, you know, of, of that. So I just say, um, just keep, your ear to the ground with, you know, the CDC as they start rolling out, you know, more and more, as they get more information and, and seeing how the vaccines are effective, that, you know, we may see, may see less and less mass wearing <laughs> need in yeah, the future. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah. And then another question I have is um, a lot of news outlets, you know, CNN, I've seen it on ABC News. Um, are covering the fact that there's a lot of mistrust within communities of color mm -hmm. in terms of getting the vaccine. You know, there's a lot of fear and, yeah, like I said, mistrust. What would you say to those people to kind of ease that fear, ease that, that tensity they have in terms of um, the vaccine, getting the vaccine? You know, I, you know s social media, you know, sometimes uh, can over-exaggerate, you know, some, some things on both sides, okay? Yeah. Um, I know a lot of fears, you know, people have, um, like say, you know, with women, you know, they're worried about, is this going to, you know, cause any issues with fertility? In, yeah, you know, that was in, another question I had, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the future, and it's no. Is it, you know, going to cause harm to a pregnancy if you're pregnant mm -hmm. or if you're, you know, breastfeeding? Mm -hmm. And they're finding that the vaccine is more protective and that the outcomes that women are having right now with um, um, that have received the vac vaccine are are more positive than if they had COVID, you know, and we're you know we're giving birth, you know, and you know, and being whatever degree of, of illness it could be very very you know bad you know yeah. for outcome for the mother and you know and the baby, mm -hmm. and so. Um, you know, there's a lot out there that you know, people are, you know, are really concerned about, mm -hmm. you know, they're, I mean, I, I hear things that um, the messenger RNA is, you know, changing our DNA, you know, you, you know, you hear all kinds, you know, people are concerned about mm -hmm. that, whereas the messenger RNA, it, it, it has no, it, it cannot, has no effect on our DNA. Um, once it delivers the, the message, the message for the messenger, mm -hmm. you know, the body 
you know, this gets rid of it. And so there's no lingering, you know, effect, you know, from the messenger RNA. And so these are things that, you know, create, you know, mistrust. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, you know, you can look in the history of other things, you know, that have caused, you know, mistrust in communities of color. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all I, I could just say to that is, you know, to talk to a healthcare professional, talk to your provider, and, and, and ask the questions that, that are making you hesitant, you know, to get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And I'm always, you know, when I'm here and my staff, you know, we want you to get the vaccine. We want you to be, you know, protected and we will answer any questions to the best of our ability. And, you know, I, all I say is that, you know, the vaccine is better than getting COVID. Yeah. You know, the, the outcomes, you know, and families, you know, you know, a couple of my family members in Southern California, you know, had, you know, they got COVID, mm -hmm. thank heavens, you know, they, they recovered. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it's, the outcomes are worse, you yeah. know, with COVID. And, you know, you could just see it spread like, you know, wildfire. Yeah, for sure. Through, through families, you know, that are, you know, close-knit families and, you know, if it's a family that, you know, um, you know, small space, you know, larger, mm -hmm. you know, family unit, you know, yeah. that you know, everybody gets sick. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, I think the biggest fear amongst people, I mean, is the fear of unknown, the unknown, obviously. Yes. And yes. I, when we get hurt, we go to the doctor. When you get sick, you go to the doctor mm -hmm. and you trust that they'll give you, you know, a remedy to, you know, help you get through it or help you get better. Right. It's just the only issue is when you ask a doctor and, and their answer is, I don't know. That's where it's like, oh, oh my gosh, like where, like what do I do from here? Um, so I think that's the main fear with people is the fear of just not knowing, you know, getting right. something and not knowing the outcome. Right. But it's good to, you know, reach out, you know, become best friends with your healthcare provider and understand that um, COVID isn't, COVID is getting, getting COVID is worse than, you know, getting the vaccine and the little side effects that you get from it. Right. So that's great. Yeah, and you know, I could just speak, you know, personally, you know, mm -hmm. when the vaccine was in the development, you know, phase, you know, you know, I was just like, ooh, you know, what mRNA? What, yeah, what is exactly. this? I don't know. Is this, you know, going to be safe? I mean, but then, you know, as I start, you know, reading about the science of it and asking questions of, you know, professionals that, you know, deal with, you know, um, developing vaccines mm -hmm. and, and getting, you know, I'll say the facts for a better, you know, lack of a better term, mm -hmm. that's when I started feeling a lot better about, you know, the, um, getting the vaccine for myself and for my family. Yeah. Because, you know, one thing when I was in pharmacy school, you know, I was taught if you're going to make a recommendation or if you're going to um, treat a patient in a certain way, you want to treat that patient as if they're your family mm -hmm. member. And so, you know, that's something that's always stuck with me. So, you know, I, I understand, you know, where people's fears come from. Yeah. And, you know, I will you know, I said myself personally, I would not, you know, make the recommendation if I would not, you know, have my family, you know, get the vaccine or myself as well. That's great. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I would say that many students aren't taking advantage of, you know, their appointments and being able to get their appointments, you know, since, you know, the emails are being sent to them, some aren't being opened. But what, it, what advice would you give students that, you know, aren't taking advantage of the opportunity to get the vaccine and be fully vaccinated? Right. And, you know, um, I really, really advise them, you know, to, to, get as vac to get vaccinated as soon as possible and not to wait until the last minute. And the, the reason being, we are giving allocations of vaccine. So they look at how many, you know, vaccines we give out, how mm -hmm. many second doses we need. And, um, you know, the California Department of Public Health determines you know, how much vaccine they, you know, they're going to and send us, us yeah. you know, on a weekly basis. And so we don't know 
when those allocations are going to run out. Mm. And so, uh, or when they're going to say, well, you're only vaccinating 50 people a day, you know, we're only going to send you 50 doses. But then maybe that's the week that, you know, 100 people want to come yeah. and get their vaccine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right now we have a good allocation, you know, of vaccine. And so I, you know, just recommend that, you know, it's better to get it sooner than, you know, to wait until the last minute because, you know, we may not have vaccine available. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. here, you know, at Sac yeah. State because it's, you know, it's, it's a week to week, you know, a week to week thing. So... You know, I understand, you know, people are busy, they're working, and, you know, right now, you know, finals are coming up, mm -hmm. but we're trying to find times and, you know, to, to make it, you know, convenient. So, please, 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 you know, take advantage mm -hmm. of, of you know, it while it's convenient. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's great. Um, so, it's great to know that we don't have just, you know, an unlimited amount of vaccines. They're not just going to keep sending us you know, the maximum, you know, it's terms of how many people are getting vaccinated weekly and then they decide. So students who are, have the ability to get it now should get it now because right. uh, like you said, they could cut it to 50 and then appointments will be scarce and it'll be harder for students to get their vaccines. So it's great that the students are getting to hear that it's not always going to be available. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, and at Sac State too. And, you know, there's also you know, Sac County and, you know, there's, you know, uh, there's other, you know, Kaiser's, Sutter's, you know, UCD that'll have it. But, you know, as far as, you know, what we're going to have here, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has, you know, has a, a shelf life on it. So. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Perfect. And the last question I would have is, you know, how would a student sign up? Okay. How would a student be able to get their appointment? And, you know, what's that process like for a student? Mm -hmm. So right now, you know, Student Affairs is making it very, very easy for them <laughs> that, uh, every week they're sending out links, you know, to the clinics. And so all they have to do is click on the link, you know, fill out, it's this basic demographic information. Uh, there's a, a page that asks for insurance. We don't need any insurance, like numbers. It's, mm -hmm. I always tell people the first box says what kind of insurance you have, or if you don't have insurance, click that box, answer it, and then save and go to the next page mm -hmm. and it's it's a very it takes maybe five minutes you know to fill out that form Perfect. and uh you get to choose what time mm -hmm. you know you want to come in to have your your vaccination sounds good and so pfizer's two doses like we spoke Correct. before so how would they be able to get their appointment for the second dose would they get it when they come in or okay and and that's you know with the system current system that we're using mm -hmm. right now we will send a link two weeks after their first dose. It'll be an invitation. It's gonna come from vaccine, uh, vaccine clinics. It's not gonna come from Sac State. Mm. And it's gonna come from vaccine clinics and it's gonna be invitation to sign up for their second dose. So again, they need to open up the, that email, mm -hmm. fill out the little five minute form, choose their appointment time, and then we'll see them on um, day 21. Perfect. Yeah. And for a student that, you know, got the email three weeks ago or a month ago and has missed out, is that link still active? Would they be able to go through and their email search vaccine mm -hmm. and, and be able to click that link? Right. So those links, therefore, that's, you know, whatever specific day. So mm -hmm. there's right now there's no kind of a universal system. You know, we may be changing over to what's called my turn. Right now we're using what's called prep mod. If someone has missed their appointment, you know, uh, for their second dose, and they might be a, a week or so, or two or three weeks, you know, you know, out, um, they can either, you know, come by the clinic, um, and we could uh, send them, you know, we could set them up with a link. If you know, if we have openings that day, you know, we'll see them that day. Uh, but they can also send a email to COVID questions. You know, uh, the the CSUS, you know, COVID questions at CSUS.edu. Okay. And they can say, oh, I missed my appointment. And I also get those emails. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so, you know, we will send links, uh, you know, to for them to, to get their second dose. That's great. That's perfect. Well, yeah. I would like to thank you, Dr. Dumarshel, for meeting with me yes. and engaging in this conversation. I believe it was very productive and a lot of questions and 
fallacies were overturned, reversed, and you know, questions were answered. So all these questions were from students. We, you know, sure. gathered them on social media. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much answered a lot of the questions that students have. So I appreciate your time and thank you for meeting. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. And yeah. hope to see everybody at the COVID vaccination clinic. Clinic, yeah. yes. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Right. Thanks.